Long over the top again. Jamali Waite measured that very well. And now trying to catch him off his line! Oh my! A worldy of a goal! Aiden Quinn! That is spectacular! And Indy 11 have the opener in Pittsburgh! You know he's got a magical left foot. Wait, doing well to come out the box whether he needed to be there, I'm not sure. But still, look at this from what, 40 yards? With venom as well. That's not chipped in, that is driven in. Even if he's in goals, it's a difficult one to say. But fantastic strike from Aiden Quinn. And I. Cam Lindley will now have to miss the next match due to yellow card accumulation. As this ball's whipped in, it's the second goal for Indy 11. Just a topo past the keeper. Sebastian Guenzani makes it 2-0. Have a look, goes wide, Solo Santa just squares it back. And it's Cam Lindley with the ball in. Question marks, maybe, or Donez, could he done more at the near post? Felt like he was just holding off Guenzani as opposed to clearing the ball, but that is what Guenzani lives for. In Of course, this is an Indy 11 side that has missed the playoffs every year since 2019. Trying to get back to the playoffs. Three points tonight would put them above the playoff line. This could put it away. Robledo scores. It's a great goal for Indy 11. 3-0 in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Riverhound star, but beautiful ball out of defense. And it comes out to the substitute Douglas Martinez head up. Puts the ball in, you can see Ordonez chasing back. They were just too stretched, Pittsburgh Riverhounds, and they were punished in the end. Well done, Indy 11. Martinez, his third assist of the season for Harrison Robledo. It is Obregon Jr. quick around the edge of the box. It looked like there was a couple of little half chances, and then nothing since then for him. Nothing to work with, no good balls into the box for him. One main great first touch, and it's a great finish as well. And Pittsburgh have pulled one back. Maybe it's not quite done yet. 3 1. And 9 99 on the count. On him earlier in the game. A good play down that right hand side. Marky Barra, long ball. Good first touch from the big man up front, and good finish as well. They're saying that there's a little bit of a shove in the back on Budardi. It was a small amount, but the referee not bothered by it. Maybe there's time to get another one. If Oakland is going to extend this two-game winning streak to a three-game winning streak, something has to change for the Roots because the 30 minutes we've seen in this second half look like the Oakland team from that six-match winless run that preceded their last two wins in a row. Now ahead to Pelais. Maybe there's the moment! Yes, it is! Just like that! Oakland ahead 1-0. Overcommit. Try to get that opening goal, but you give credit to Brian Tamakas. Picks his head up and just plays it into the path of his striker. And as a striker, you want to stay high. You want to occupy the two center backs. Playing off the shoulder of Zali and Lodge, but give credit to Pelizzi. He takes it too early. And as he takes it early, that really cuts down the angle for, Diaz, for Leo Diaz not to make a save, not to get his footing right. And that's a striker's goal. And again, the way that Sacramento want to play, having a guy like Sebastian Herrera up top is exactly what's helped make them successful. So they've had to adjust here. And this is where they want the ball. And this man's feet. Gurhan! Oh, yes! Yeah, Sacramento! Jack Kerr gets the start, comes in, comes with a massive attack early on, his fourth assist on the year. He shows that he's going to the right. Initial play by Cicerone, he shows to the right, cuts back on his left, and he has numbers in the box. And Keko does the rest. And you put that amount of players in the box, you're bound to find someone at some time, and fantastic delivery, and just like that. Break through here. A little combination. Kekko's got room in front of him. Harvey's not going to catch him. 
to the right side, back to Gurick goes. Kekko's got room. Kekko a little bit to the right here. We'll try to small tap. Here's Zico. It's in front of Cicerone. Oh, he's the USL Championship leader in goal style with 11. Wasn't pretty. Doesn't matter. It's number two on the night. Ball, but from the loose ball, Jared Timmer gets it. And it's four or five passes, quick, triangles, give and goes. Jack Gurren support. And they have to stand off him, Troy. He doesn't know if he's going to go his right, his left. He slips it through to Keiko, scrambles around. Cicerone does what he needs to do. Might be, a, might be an assist on Zico there, too. I'm not quite sure. It looked like he was trying to just get it through, but he's essentially a bit of a force there. Sosa. Sosa's got room. Decides to elect it off fine. Zico pops right back up. Zico Lewis will go for goal. Oh my goodness! Zico Lewis with a thunderous strike. His first on the year, and it's worth the price of admission. Oh my goodness! Three nothing in the half for Sacramento. It took a heavy deflection off Monjoma, but. The amount of pace that was on the ball from Zico Lewis, there's nothing Rakowski could do. And he gets back up and he's just so quick with his feet. And the big deflection just took it past the goalkeeper. But when you put that much pace and power, you can just hope that they don't give up anymore, try and get one, and then just see how the game goes from there. Gurr headed forward looking for Kekko. Kekko finds it in stride. Kekko will send it back to Gurr. Gurr with a set. Gurr! The two combine again, but it's Gurr on the end of it for his fifth goal of the season. And Jack Gurr was initially, who flicks it on to Keiko and continues his run. First touch, immaculate. Second, through the legs of the goalkeeper, 4-0. I said it was going to be tough. At 3-0 for this Phoenix Rising side to get back into it, 4-0. Malloy looking centrally, plays it to the far side. Etu steps in and picks the pass off, and Ibarra trying to win it back, sees Malloy keep it with a nice little give and go. Malloy slices the ball into the penalty area, and the shot is in! Ten minutes gone, and Memphis scores the first goal of the match! And for the second year running at Highmark, Luis Fernando scores against the Riverhounds to give them the lead. Off the heels of what I'm talking about, Century, but look at the change of the movement from Fernando. As Joy Fields get caught ball watching just to come outside to inside, and it's a brilliant first touch. It's a brilliant angle here to beat his individual marker, but how quick does he get it out of his feet? Head down, low and hard to that near post. Nothing Jamali Waite can do, and it's a dream start for Memphis 9-1. How clinical Fernando has been. Stages of August, you can feel the intensity just from the emotion both coaches have shown, especially St Stephen Glass and his staff. How important this game is, and Memphis in this important game are 2-0 up. Rodrigo da Costa heads it home. What a start for the Beale Street boys. 35 minutes into it, they're 2-0 up at Highmark. Incredible stuff. It's a quality that he possesses on that right foot of a wand. But this is not X and O's, this is not game plan, that's just willingness to beat your individual mark as he rises up. It's a terrific header from Da Costa. Just plays off the shoulder of Dos Santos and Danny Griffin. Heads it down, and that's a goalkeeper's nightmare. You talk about you bring in Rodrigo Da Costa from Tulsa. How quick can he get into? Griffin, across the face. It's cleared off the line. Rebound is fought for, and it's in. Pittsburgh scores. They get one back. Joey Farrell scores Pittsburgh's 1,000th goal as a franchise. And the Hounds, on the stroke of halftime, are back in it. It's 2-1. Get the ball over the line. We talked about how important set pieces are going to be. Danny Griffin, the composure just to close his hips and put the ball in a dangerous area. And then it's all ping pong. Joey Farrell is the last one to get a touch on it. Pure will. Griffin. At two. Looking for Canardo Forbes. Forbes is crossed into the middle. At the back post, it's in! 
Danny Rivera equalizes for the Riverhounds. And from 2-0 down, Pittsburgh are level. It's two each. Your wing back's involved in the final third. Junior Etto understands if I thread this needle into Kanata Forbes, he's going to get into the interior. He's going to pull out Aaron Malloy. And then that leaves a lot of real estate on the backside. Everyone's ball watching. Everyone's crashing that near post. Who's going to make that far post run? It's a minute of the action in 2023. Whether your club is on the road or at home, catch nearly every second of USL Championship action on ESPN+. Plus. This ball is sent into the middle. It's Obergon Jr. saved by the goalkeeper. A second try, and it is in. Pittsburgh have totally turned the game on its head now. One Obergon Jr.'s first goal for the club sees the Riverhounds come from 2-0 down to lead 3-2 at Highmark. It's 9-1. That's your right back pressing so high, and your right center back. Graham Smith that gets beaten. As the ball comes centrally, Jelani Peter is just so unlucky. Loses his footing. Second bite at the app. Obergon does very well initially to open up his hip, but it's straight at Romig. But as the ball pops out, give credit to the center back. Excuse me, to the center striker. Second bite at the apple makes no mistake about it. A slip there. Sees Obergon Jr. play it in for Ibarra. Show on me through the middle for Pittsburgh. It's Tola, show on me, 4-2, brilliant finish. Fourth goal of the season for Tola, show on me. Pittsburgh trailed by 2-0 in this game. With half an hour left, they lead by two. It's Pittsburgh four, Memphis two. Of defending 101, that's your center back, Graham Smith, that steps up into that midfield third. And as he does that, it's slow in rotation. If you're Jelani Peters, you have to have the ability to provide cover. Reese Buckmaxer again gets caught, ball, ball side, but give credit to Shawanmi. is very good, uses his body as the shield, and then a clinical and fantastic finish. Guides it into that far post. This doesn't quite reach Allen. Martinez had it picked. Corcoran gets it to the feet of Brett. Agadello, first time. Kasim is off and running. Flag stays down. Kasim is in. Kasim scores. Counter attacking brilliance from Birmingham Legion. And it's Starboy himself, Prosper Kasim, that has the opening goal. Great ball from Juan Agadello over the top. Cuts out all the defenders. Prosper Kasim just has to pass it into the corner, which he does very calmly. Second effort sends it away from the touch of Pierre Reedy, the former Penn State Nittany Lion. Williams cut it back. Traeger off the post and in. Tristan Traeger, what a strike, and we're tied at one. Tristan Traeger has not had a lot of looks at goal, but he hits that one very cleanly with the left foot. Williams unmarked for a moment. Bring it down with his chest. Let's confirm four minutes of stoppage time to close the night, brought to you by UAP Medicine. Williams to the back post. Dodson across the face of goal. Derek Dodson might have just won it for Charleston Battery, the second of two late goals. And now he contributes to the attack. Sneaks in around the back post and just out jumps Moses Mensa. Heads it back across goal, which leaves Matt Van Okel with no. The confidence has just been ever growing with this group. Mention that we've got ourselves on a good track at the moment. Salazar slipping through. The flag stays down. Salazar shoots. And despite it ripping through hands, it goes in anyway. Michael Salazar blasts it home. 
Salazar, good time running behind the defense. A save that the goalkeeper should make. Hits him in the hands, but that, it's a shot that's hit with a lot of power. He finds himself in front of the net, picks his head up. But what I like about this play is the build-up play before the game. You look at it before the pass. One, two, runner comes through. Well-timed run, finds himself on the back shoulder. Good first touch, picks his head up. Drives the ball with a lot of power. I think Farrell would like to have that one back. That's a ball he could push over the bar. And he'll play it all the way back to Craig. It's one back by Loudon. Landry oh! driving it forward. Rolls it to a med car. Now Ryan. Here's Williamson. Juking his way inside. Serves it up. The deflection. It spills through. And Loudon find an equalizer. Press here was the build up play. You see Ryan finding Williams out wide. If you see the run that El Medcar makes, he runs off of Ryan's back shoulder. He's able to find himself on top of the box. And that's what we talked about. You put the ball on target, you hit shots, you never know what can happen. This time it's a deflection off the defender. Not much as the Dejas could do there. Completely wrong footed off the deflection. But what's more important is this build up here. El Medcar makes a great run off of Ryan's back. Good job by El Medcar with that second wave of pressure. Now Salazar breaking the other way, trying to beat his man. Takes a step, plays it to Rivas. Rivas to Telfer. Telfer takes the shot, and Telfer backs it home. The advantage reclaimed by Miami. Turn off the back shoulders all night. Great runoff here. Washington doing a good job trying to slow him down. Hold it. Salazar does a good job holding him off. Cuts it up, picks his head up, finds Rivas. Rivas playing the great ball. He had an eye for a goal. He picks his head up, finds Telfer, makes no mistake about it. That's an incredible finish. You pick your head up, you drive the ball across the net. But this is the effort from Salazar. This is what causes the goal. He does a good job holding Washington off, uses his body, uses his arm to keep him off, picks his head up, finds that late, late runner, Rivas. Unselfishly, Rivas finds that guy on the back post. Dennis bending it in, Lasso delivers the header to give the Rowdies the lead. But the damn family, the damn finally broke. Lasso has been on the end of these crosses for the better part of the night. And he finally gets one guided into the last post. Brilliant delivery by Dennis, right into the six yard box, and you can't afford the six foot five lumberjack to get a clear header there. Big question, Austin. Dennis for Jennings in position. Save made by Nelson, but followed up. What a left footed effort by Dennis. And there's the second Rowdy's goal. Kyle Jennings is onside, but this touch right here gets Jennings out of the play. Good save by Nelson, and look at the technique by Dennis. Keeps his head down, and tucks it away, and puts the Rowdies in a commanding 2-0 lead now. Dennis circles and loses possession. What an important touch by Cleveland. Doherty, great cross, and it's headed in, J.J. Williams against his former team, Williams delivers a third Rowdy's goal of the half. Well, he celebrated it all right. All the hard work comes to the byline and delivers a peach, and he says good morning to everyone in Ralph's mob. J.J. Williams put Diop had a good chance earlier. Crosses this one. Now Jimenez back towards the middle, and it's in! Winder, 1-0, Loose City. Everything you could do not to score it, but on this occasion, the ball ends up in the back of the net. Not the cleanest of finishes. Bobbles up off his foot, his knee is shin, -cad, his shin pad. I don't think Danny Cruz cares as long as the ball's in the back of the net. But this has been the dominance that Louisville City have had in creating chances. They've definitely been the better team in the, in the final third, despite not having the most possession. And they find themselves in the lead 1-0 at home in front of their sellout crowd right now.
If he could just beat the first defender, he has some big targets to aim for. You have Tosh in there, you have Adams in there, you have Lancaster in there. Adams, as we spoke about, has been known for getting himself on the score sheet. Tosh, for sure, gets himself on the score sheet. And then it's puts it in! And Lancaster scores! The break they needed. Great delivery. He spoke about missing the first man. He does exactly that. Lancaster is in the right place at the right time. Meshach Jerome just caught ball watching here. Doesn't mark the play up. Straightforward header there from Lancaster. Get himself on the score sheet. We spoke about he's been he's been on it tonight. He's been tenacious. He's been taking shots from distance. He's been working hard. And I think this goal. Boros have not stopped a penalty this season. And you see Derek right there ready against Solniak. These are two players to watch. Shot by Solniak is a goal. And the locomotive are on top early. Not even three minutes after the opening kick, and it's El Paso Locomotive taking the lead at HEB Park. First shot of the match, and could not have been done. In pressure here by the Toros early on, trying to get that equalizer. Oh, and this pass intercepted there by Galindras. Here's Davila with a shot and a score, and we're all tied up. It's game on here at HEB Park. And who else but Taylor Davila coming up huge in that situation. We mentioned second in the USL with 44 chances created. Make that 45. He also picks up his fourth goal of the year. That'll pull him into second on the team. And is a Swiss Army knife on the soccer pitch. And take a look at this attack right here. Moves to his left, forces the defender to keep an eye on Francois. That gives him a wider look at right. Now the Toros. Don't have the best home record, two and three with five draws. As here's a chance here brewing for El Paso, moving in against Derek, and a shot and a score. It's Josue Gomez. Josue Gomez scores for El Paso Locomotive. He had scored against the Toros two weeks ago, tying up that game at 1-1, and now he gives his team a 2-1 lead. We said quick counters. They sent that ball deep, and Gomez uses that speed to get out in front of it. If that hadn't gone in, he probably was going to pick up a foul anyway as from the backside. It looks like it'll be Cabretta right there who will be taking this free kick. Davila standing over to his right. They've got Pimentel kind of screening the keeper right now. Pimentel moves, shot, and it's a goal! A perfect strike by Taylor Davila! And the Toros have tied it once again! That is the second strike for Taylor Davila, having himself a match. Davila. And let me correct myself. Ricketts was the one providing the screen, but same effect there. Yeah, I think you're right. That was a good angle. Here's the corner. Coming in, in swinger. There's a header, another header, and that's a goal. And the Toros have taken the lead. Can you believe it? They've trailed twice and now have the lead for the first time. And it's Francois who does the honors. Third goal, just five foot seven, but he's able to clear some space in the box, and you see it here. Francois, I don't think that was Francois that touched that. That may have been an own goal. I think. Quickly feeds Ricketts. And now Cabretta with it. Team's goal leader moves into the area, finds Galindras. Galindras unable to get turned, but there's a shot and a goal. Toros move two goals in front. It's Wilmer Cabretta with his seventh of the year. Grand Valley now doubling up El Paso. That's a spectacular pass by Galindres. Pulls the defenders over. Cabretta comes in. Nice strike with that left foot. And Jose Torres is going to have a chance to have a huge impact here. Torres wearing the captain's armband. Shoots and scores! Wrong foot of the keeper. And slices it right there into the back of the net. And Torres puts the Toros in front 5-2. to two. 35 to 2. Another look here at Jose Torres. He's 35, but he's got the energy. Big score there. And he tells his teammates, watch this. Look what I got. Antonio does not score. The longer the result of this match kind of lingers a little bit. Juan Pablo Torres into the box. That's dangerous, and it's through. And it's a good goal for Hartford Athletic. It's Connor McGlynn, the defender, coming up, and he slips it past Jordan Farr. And little slotted ball by Barrera. Honestly, a, a bit of a miss hit on the cross, but 
He's just wide open. No one's marking him. In between three SAFC players, just kind of ball watching and I was shocked. I was I didn't realize he was at Hartford and I mean that guy is just a goal scoring machine. Yeah, hoping oh at 13 goals last year playing in Detroit City, 39 goals in his USL championship career. But as you mentioned, he's been on the bench. This is the third consecutive time Obin Namazi has started. Oh, that's wonderful from Taddy Olawashi! Brilliant! Just stuck out the left foot and the chip over the keeper. Joe Rice and in in the 15th minute levels this match is at one. Just dropped right on his stride. Gets out there before the keeper and just places it right in the front post. Tani Olawashi with his 10th goal in 12 matches since joining San Antonio FC. He collection comes back into the midfield. Connor Maloney keeps it moving. Robin Lappert had it and then lost it and then back off to the races. Oh, no man's land for Joe Rice and Tani Olawashi makes a pay. The first half brace for Olawashi in the half hour and San Antonio FC's got a 2-1 lead. Once you see Rice hesitating, you're exactly right. Got caught in no man's land and Oluwase just, he's committed. He's gonna get on the end of it. Great finish. Joe Rice, he, he knows you can't be indecisive when you got Tani Oluwase running at you. And Oluwase has got one in the 15th and 30th minute. San Antonio FC's got a 2-1 advantage here. Switch the play in Rito's direction as Hartford trying to Stretch San Antonio out. Sadie. Rito into the box. The turn from Barrera. Top of the box here. Andre Lewis looking with his left. Oh, it gets the slip back and puts it in. And that is a good goal for Hartford. And it's the sneaky Jamaican Andre Lewis. In a match, but I mean, that is some beautiful football. Two one twos. Great little slip ball and good composure to put this in the back of the net. I mean, there was, there was three or four passes inside the 18. Right-footed in, swinger Rita Zoo here. Delivers this ball, headed, and it's in! Headed on the top of the box from Justin Dillon in San Antonio. Has pulled ahead with the opening goal in the second half. Really well done by Justin Dillon. Really just a redirection, didn't even leave the ground. Andre Lewis trying to save it off the line, but Zuhair. Dylan knocks it down, it's loose, and it's Tani Owashi with a hat trick and a historic goal. He's pulled ahead of the Golden Boot race, and he is now the single season all time scoring leader in San Antonio FC history. Hat trick of the season. A just great job by Justin Dillon and Olawashe there to finish. Looked like initially Tainter was gonna get on the end of it, but it was just an awkward bounce and just happened to be at the right place at the right time. Four minutes of added time here at the end of the second half. It's already gone down as one of the greatest seasons, and it's gonna maybe be another. And Teddy Olawase puts it a fourth. How about that? Teddy Olawase have a night at Toyota Field, young fella. Four goals, and San Antonio FC on their way to victory. Picks off the pass, good composure. Rifles went low and hard, and. I just can't de deal with it. San Antonio FC. This was the kind of response as a club that they wanted. Particularly after being shut out after so many chances. Two players, especially of the quality of Arteaga as well. Another chance opportunity. And now Harvey breaks through wide open. This is a goal for Phoenix. They're on the board. And this time Arteaga does not miss. Cool this game can be. And just moments after Phoenix Rising switch out of a back three and go 4-2-3-1. They 
start winning the ball higher up the field. They get Arteaga and numbers forward. Good win there by Harvey and then really good awareness to know where Arteaga is. A little bit too light on that touch. That was a push right in front of the ref that wasn't called. And now, opportunity, Treo fires, and it's the back of the net. Danny Trejo's ninth goal of the year, and it's 2-0 Phoenix. And this is recognizing when you can go forward, you win the ball in your own defensive half, but it takes them two, three passes, and it unlocks that space in behind for Danny Trejo. 6-11 and 5 this season. They have 23 points. Now they're going to worry about a team from Miami that's won back-to-back -back contests. You see the record for Oakland at 9-6-6. Six, and six. Playing in front of a rowdy bunch here, they certainly give the home team faithful shot on goal. It's the first one of the night, and the scoreboard early on favors the home team. And it's one to nothing. Oakland Roots exactly how you dial it up for Maxi Rodriguez. Delgado, how quickly can you expand and play off the shoulder of Detroit City? And we've seen it from John Rodriguez time and time throughout this year. The ability to create something out of nothing. Picks up his head, no one closes down the space, whether it is Lewis, whether it is Carroll, and pick that out. Head down, lace it through the ball. You see the lack of rotation on the ball. He hits it so clean and so pure. Dream start here for the Oakland Roots. Paul Blanchett is a walking highlight reel for Oakland. He is so reliable. This one played through, and there's the equalizer in the fifth minute. Well, Ricky, you asked the question. There's your answer. How would Detroit respond? Bang, bang, play. Stephen Carroll on set pieces are a brilliant way to claw yourself back into the game. But if you're no Delgado, you're going to be extremely frustrated with the lack of taking the initiative to declare this ball. As this ball bounces in that six yard box, give credit to the big man, the center back, right at the doorstep. Just guide, guide it into the back of the post and not a very easy finish for a player that quality. Tavutio. Moreno, pokes it away, loses possession though. Opportunity for Orange County to break forward. In a lot of spaces, Jameson. He'll get there, the flag stays down, across goal, begging for it and they will get it. How about that for a birthday gift in the 80th minute? Milan Oloski turns 24 today and makes it 1-0 for the hosts. It all starts in the middle, opening onto the right side. Jamison takes his time. Had the opportunity to take the shot on yeah. goal, but guess what? I'm going to look for the goal scorer, makes the right decision, and then it's a finish for Oloski in front of goal. How about that for a birthday gift from Jamison? Which I was happy with because I didn't particularly like living up there. Yes. <laughs> so. And then the greener pastures of the Netherlands followed. That was the next club, yeah. Cross comes in from the right. It's a diving header and it's in. Russell Ciceroni, a gorgeous goal. His 12th on the season. And that is why he leads the USL Championship in scoring. Quiet for the last five minutes. Great ball out to Kiko. He's looked into the box, a great ball into the space. Where's the defense? And Cicerone's beat Bushu. The defenders are wide open and a free header from six yard out is hard to defend. Alton goes to the spot looking for his second goal of the season in first half stoppage time. Danny Vidiello trying to keep it out. Here's Carlton. Smashing finish off the hands of Vidiello. A tying goal for Carlton. And he knew what he was doing and the strike is just enough the goalkeeper's gonna it's one of those where the goalkeeper's wanting that one back isn't he because he thinks he's nine times out of ten he's he's tipping that over the bar that's how i feel about my chats with you andrew safe zone judgment free i do i do like catching you out though when you get errors in your statistics there's a shot that is not an error that is right on the mark what a hit it was from Zico Lewis, just a half turn and a smash and a baby celebration for the Berbunen. 2-1 Sacramento. Play a game from Cicerone, he gets the ball, a nice little dink and it's all on the touch. His first touch opens it up. I think Perez has a lot to do with that. Oh, 
Hardly. And a follow Corona. Who goes low? And in! San Diego with the first strike of the day. Joe Corona. Like Joe Corona, an opportunity like that. These are the things that tend to happen. He is so good. And we haven't seen a lot of goals from Joe Corona. He gets asked to do a lot of things for San Diego. Mix in a few of these throughout the year. And that's exactly what you want. Absolute missile from Joe Corona. Experiences for your group, post-match penalty kicks, photos in the field, pre-game, halftime, high-five tunnel, all that. Including your group outing. SDLoyal.com slash tickets, 858-465-GOAL. You can email tickets at SDLoyal.com. Matiti in for Ronaldo, who fires away once, twice, and in! Ronaldo again! You can see how much it means to him. It's going to win it for San Diego. They're going to take all three points there for the rebound. And he wasn't going to miss a second time.